Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about for loops and while loops. Since we have quite a few things to touch on today, we're going to briefly touch on each of those, but this is going to give you an overview of loops, which are super important to your Roblox game. Hope you're excited. Let's dive right in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do again is we're going to insert a script into server script service. I'll name the script loops script. Perfect. So first we're going to talk about for loops and what are for loops? Basically, when you think of a loop, it goes around and around. That's what loops do, and for loops are no exception to that. They loop around and around until they're supposed to stop. So first we're going to talk about just a regular for loop, and then an in pairs loop, and then we'll do while loops. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write out a for loop. So we'll say for i equals 1, comma 10, comma 1, do, and drop a line, and it'll add an end. Whew, that's a lot of numbers. <laughs> so what this is saying is we have created this new variable called i. You can name it whatever you want, um, but usually you keep it at i. That's typically what it is. Um, so you're creating this new variable called i, and each of these little commas separate a specific thing. So the first one is just setting our variable. i is equal to 1. The second one is when are we going to stop looping? So once i is equal to 10, then we will break out of this loop, okay? And the last one is the increment. So how much it is going to add to i each time it comes around. To illustrate this further, let's go ahead and just print i. And now I'm going to hit run. And you can see in the output, as you can see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, and then these are different scripts down here. So as you can see, what, what we did was we looped through and continued to loop through, adding 1 to i every time we passed back around, and we stopped once it was equal to 10. This can be helpful if you want to loop a certain amount of times, like if you want to loop um, until we reach the number of players, um, you can do that. But that is basically how loops works. Just remember, this one is the variable. You're setting i to 1. Next, when will it stop when i is equal to this number? Lastly, how much we, we increment by, so how much we're going to add to i each time we, we loop back around. And it's going to continue and continue until this condition is met. So those are four loops, and there's so much more that you can do with it, but I just want to touch on that briefly uh, because we have a lot to cover today. Next, we'll talk about four in pairs loops. So to create an in pairs loop, we gotta create a table. So we can say local my table equals to this. And let's just, uh, I'm gonna create my, um, my YouTube table again. Perfect, so now I have my YouTube table. These are just brief, uh, this is a brief, quick table. And we can say for i comma v in pairs, my YouTube table, do. And there we go, so what this kind of loop does this is going to loop through everything in our table so what all these mean is we are doing four so four means we're going to start looping through it um i comma v so these are two different variables now i is the number we're at so once when it loops through it's going to find code bar 29 then it's going to find true then it's going to find 8000 code bar 29 is one True is number two, and 8,000 is number three, right? It's the spot in the table that they're at. That's what I is, the spot in the table that it's at in the loop. And V is the actual item itself, so what actually is in the table. So if we were to print V, um, let's just print I, and then print V. And it's going to loop through all of these items. And if we look down in the output, we have one, code word 29, right? Spot one in the table. 2, true. That was spot 2 in the table. S spot 3, 8,000. So as you can see, that's what these loops do. That's what I was talking about last time when I said we'll be able to loop through tables. And something you can do, I'm going to show you a couple quick things. Uh, we're going to do get children, get players, uh, or sorry, um, yeah, get children, get players, and get descendants. I'm going to show you those real quick. So what am I talking about? Well, we can say something like local workspace children equals to game dot workspace so this is our new variable and it is equal to game dot workspace colon get children when you write this it is creating a brand new table with all of the children inside of workspace okay so everything inside of workspace is now in this table 
And what we can do is we can loop through this. So 4i, b in pairs, workspace children do. And you can say print, let's just print v.name. Since these are all uh, items, let's just print the name of the item. Because all of these d different things in the workspace have a name. So if we do that and hit play, you can see that we have all of the names from the different things in the base plate. We have camera, base plate, I'm sorry, we have all of the names from the things instead of the workspace. So we have camera, base plate, terrain, spawn location, properties part, touch part, and yeah, that is how that works. You can also, if you don't want to create a new variable, we could get rid of that. And we can just say for i, comma, v in pairs, workspace, or game, dot workspace, game, dot workspace, colon, get children, do. And that will just loop through all the things in the in the workspace. Now I talked about get descendants, so we're going to talk about that real quick. Let's create a new one for i comma v in pairs. Game dot workspace colon get descendants do. Descendants are not only the children, but also the children of the children. It's every everything in here, all of the scripts, everything in the workspace is a descendant. We talked about that a little bit. So if we get descendants. It's going to create a new table with all of the descendants, and it's going to loop through that table. So if we wanted to, we could also print v.name. And if we print v.name and hit run, you can see we have all of these other parts, except we now also have script, decal, and another script. That's because we looped through everything in here the textures and the decals and the scripts included everything all the descendants now there's a, one other one there are so many others you can do but there's one other one i want to show you because this is really helpful and i use it all the time it's get players so we can say for i comma v in pairs game dot players colon get players do and now it'll create a brand new table with all of the players in the game and you could do whatever you want you could print v.name if you wanted and that'll print the players names all of the players names and we can start manipulating the players and doing things with them in another episode but uh, that's just those are get children get descendants and get players they create new tables that you can loop through with a four in pairs loop okay all right the last loop we're going to touch on is a while loop and uh, these are similar to a for loop, but instead of stopping at a condition like 10, once i is equal to 10, we can do that, but we do it a little differently. So we say while, let's just say while 1 plus 1 equals equals 2 do. So while 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, we're going to continue to do this. And we can just print hello. And super, super important, wait one or else your computer is going to crash. Because if you don't wait at all, this loop is just going to continue to run and run and run and run forever. Um, because, at, like, quicker than quicker than a second. It's just going to continue to loop through and over, over and over and over because 1 plus 1 will always equal 2. So if we hit run, you'll see every second it's going to print hello, 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 hello. And as you can see, it's printing it every second. And yeah, so that works. So those are while loops. And um, But what if you didn't want it to run forever? Well, you could check a condition. You could check uh, if game.workspace. Um, and then we haven't touched on that, so actually I'm going to do something else. So we can just say if um, game.lighting.timeofday equals equals... 14 o'clock. I think that's what we set it to. Yeah, it's at 14. We can say while game.lighting time of day equals this. Then we'll continue. And it's going to continue on like that. Printing hello. So I'm going to get rid of this because I want to show you something else we can do. We can so, uh, say while wait one do. And what this is going to do is forever, for um, every one second, it's going to continue to loop through this, and we can set the time of day. So let's make a little um, day-night cycle. So every, let's just say every 10 seconds, we are going to um, make the clock time later. So we'll say game.lighting, and here's a property of lighting. It's called clock time, so this is a bool, I mean, sorry, an int value, an integer. And as you can see, if we click this and drag the slider, it makes it... Um, you know, closer and closer to day or night, depending on what we do. 
So let's just set this back to 14, how we had it. And this is how we can change the time of day. So in here, in our loop script, while wait 10 do so for ev forever and ever for ten every 10 seconds, we are going to set game.lighting.clocktime equal to game.lighting.clocktime. So we're going to set it equal to itself plus 0.5. So we're going to add 0.5 to the clock every 10 seconds. And that will set it, that means every 20 seconds, it's going to be an hour. Because 0.5 plus 0.5 is 1, and that's an hour. So every 10 seconds, it will make it a little bit darker. But for the purposes of the video, just so it doesn't get too long, I'm going to set it to every 1 second, it will change the clock by, by 0.5. So if we hit run, you'll be able to see that our time of day is going to change every second. And it's going to see the sun is getting darker, or going down and down and down. And now it's dark, and the moon's going to come up. Now, this is really choppy, as you can see. And it's because we're adding by um, pretty big increments. We're adding a half an hour every second. So we can do 0.05, and while wait 0.1 do, so every 0.1 second, we're going to add 0.05 to the clock. Now we hit run. And now we can see that it is starting to move. It's moving, but it's moving at a, at, a, uh, at a slighter pace now. And now it'll look more and more like an, a normal day and night cycle. Obviously, this is pretty fast. You would want to wait m uh, a lot longer than this before you um, have the day and night cycle do that. So the way you would change that is just by changing uh, this number right here. So maybe every 10 seconds, it'll add 0.5 to the clock. And then that'll be uh, within, like, I think it should be about 10 minutes, maybe longer is a full day cycle. Um, but uh, I'm not going to do that math right now, but you can. One other thing you can do, and if you don't want it to do this, you can also say while well, true do, and that will just also forever and ever and ever. But that way, we need to add a wait down here, otherwise it'll crash our computer once again. So I'll add, wait 0.01 seconds. Every 0.01 seconds it's going to continue to loop and loop and loop and loop and loop forever and ever until we break, which is the last thing we're about to learn. But let's just go ahead and take a look at this day and night cycle. As you can see, it's going so fast, but uh, that's fine for the purposes of the video. Yeah, there we go. So that's how we can add our day and night cycle. But maybe we want it to stop. Let's just create a hypothetical situation where we're making a game and we want it to stop at midnight. So maybe once, let's just say, once it's at zero, we want it to just stop. So I'll set this to one to start. And we'll go into our loop script and we'll say, well, true, do. And then after the wait, uh, right before the wait 0 0.01, we'll say if game.lighting dot clock time equals equals zero then so we're looping through and if it's equal to zero and it will be at some point we can say break and what's it what is this going to do well it's going to break out of this while loop and it's going to stop the while loop okay that's what break does it gets out of that loop and you can use this for for loops as well so as you can see the clock is moving our day and night cycle is working, it's becoming day, but once it's midnight, and once it's midnight, right about now, it's going to stop, because it, bro it broke out of that for or while loop. So that's what break does, and like I said, you could do it over here too, if you wanted to, to for some reason, um, or if you wanted to loop through my YouTube table but not get to 8,000, we can say if I equals equals two, then we can add a break here. So it's only gonna loop through two, and then once it's equal to two, then we will break it. And we can scroll down in the output, and we will notice that when it prints codebar 29 and true, it doesn't print our 8,000 because we broke out of that loop. So that was a really fun episode. I hope you enjoyed loops. They are, um, they're really fun to, to deal with and work with. It's really cool and it's helpful for your games. Um, we'll get into looping through the players and actually doing things later in the series, especially when we start making our game for the last part. So I hope you have enjoyed this episode. If you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe. If the next video is out, it'll be on your screen right now. Otherwise, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.